now we're going to go ahead and do some mountains. Everybody likes mountains. Everybody wants to do mountains, so that's what we're going to go ahead and do. You'll see, hopefully, that we're, the way we work is we try to go from the very, very farthest distance possible in the back and work our way forward. Okay? And so from the back, working forward, uh, we'll do our details up here in the front. And the further away things get, the less distinct they are. And so we have to keep that in mind when we're doing our painting. All right, so for our mountains, I'm going to get a fresh plate. And don't worry, this color that we used here, all this left over, it's not going to go to waste, as you're about to see. So I'm going to take that palette knife. If you don't have one, you can do this with a brush, but it's going to be a lot harder, I think. I'm going to take that knife, and what I want to do is I want to get a good, dark color. So I'm going to take some of this alizarin crimson, smush that on. Take a lot of this thalo blue, smush that on. Okay. I'm going to take a touch of this lamp black, put that on. And then just a tiny, tiny little bit of the burnt umber. Mix these all together. It's going to give me a really rich, dark color exactly what we want. Okay. We want it dark, dark, dark. Not quite black, not quite purple, not quite brown, just sort of a, a mix of all of them. Okay. Now, what I am going to do get a little bit more white okay. because I'm going to have these in the distance. I told you I use a lot of white. So watch how I do this. So this pile of white I'm going to take just a very very little bit of the dark because you've seen now how much the dark can pollute the white and start mixing that into the white. And that'll give me a much, much lighter kind of slate color, which is exactly what we want. Okay. And the reason why I want this white on there is because the farther away things get in the atmosphere, the more the atmosphere lightens the values. And again, value is the intensity of a color's hue relative to the observer. I'll go ahead and clean my knife. I'm using the thinner and I'm wiping it on my beat up old towel. Okay. So there are two ways I can go ahead and start my mountain that's farthest away. I can do it with a knife or I can do it with a brush. I'm going to show you both and you can figure out in your work whatever works better for you and go ahead and do that. So before I do that, let's go ahead and get an idea of what it is I'm doing. So I'm going to take my medium-sized brush, okay, dip it in some thinner, okay. and then with that thinner, I'm going to take just the slightest little bit of this burnt umber, because I've got burnt umber in my mountain colors already. And we're going to go ahead and we'll have a mountain, I don't know, looks good. It's going to be the further one, okay. and then we'll put one closer. So I'll have it go something like that. Good, mighty peak. So now that's going to look nice. Okay. Get my brush into some thinner, get a little bit more of that burnt umber. Okay. Not going to hurt anything to do this. And then let's go ahead and have, uh, what should we have? I need some hills. So let's 
put some hills like that. Some foothills. So what I've done is I've just added a whole series of planes to this painting. to be too severe. I want these to be gentle rolling hills. Even this one is a little foreground. Yeah, that's better. But as you'll see, this burnt umber doesn't hurt anything. We're going to paint right over it. But now I've got at least an idea of what I want to do. Okay. So as promised, we're going to do the first mountain with the knife. So I'm going to take the palette knife, take the edge like that, okay? And I'm going to go ahead and very, very firmly put it on here and scrape it. Put it on. Follow my outline approximately. It doesn't have to be exact. As you can hear, I'm pushing pretty hard. I don't like this rounded edge, so I'm going to make it more jagged. Like that. And we can do that. Just start dragging that paint down. And you'll notice I'm covering the burnt umber that we put down. Now I just noticed a little mistake that I made, and that's okay, it gives me an opportunity to show you something. So when I got that burnt umber for the outlines onto this uh, canvas, what ended up happening, I'm going to go ahead and take this knife, put that thinner, wipe it. But anyway, what happened with that uh, burnt umber is I got a few spatters of the thinner onto my canvas, onto my clouds here. So all I need to do is just with a clean, dry fan brush, just re-fan that out. That's fine. No big deal. As long as we know how to handle the mistakes in oil paints. They're not that stressful. I mean, well, they can be. But they don't have to ruin the painting. It just may take a little bit of patience and time to fix it, that's all. And sometimes you might judge it's not worth it, and that's okay. I've got a whole stack of paintings I judged not worth finishing, which I'll show you. Keep these clouds nice and kinetic, like we've discussed. It works. Clean the brush. Okay. And we're going to take that medium brush, nice clean one. Okay. Make sure it's good and dry. start brushing out this top edge of this mountain. And I'm always brushing down. Down, down, down. Anywhere that I see a ridge, like there. Let's get this light over so I can see the shadows. So we've got a ridge right here. Let's go ahead and brush that out. Okay. And we've got a little one right there. We're going to brush that out. 
And then on this side, same thing. Just trying to make sure that the edges are nice and smooth. Brushing the excess paint down, down, and down. Just like so. Now I can take my larger brush, or the fan brush, it really doesn't matter. And in this case, I'm going to take the fan brush. Nice, clean, dry fan brush. Right. And just start pulling this into nothing. Like that. Okay. And if I get it onto my mountain in the foreground, no big deal. But now you can see why I wanted to use that other brush to do the edges, because doing the edges with a fan brush, very hard. Much more difficult. easier to do that with a sharper edged brush and then just fill out this bottom with a larger brush and just brushing it into nothing. Now, mountains and in mist, or misty mess. So I cleaned my fan brush and now I'm going to go right into this white and just like what we did with the horizon, I'm going to start below the mountain and just start going up like that and then brushing it out into nothing until it fades into the mountain color itself. Just like that. I can add a little bit more. get a little bit on this brown, no big deal. I'll be painting over that anyways with hill color. Clean the brush because I got it polluted with some of that brown. Get back into some white. Let's clean that up just a little bit. And then just brush it in to nothing. Just very, very lightly, just like that. There should be no particular line where the mist stops and the mountain color starts. Okay. So that's one way to do a mountain. The other way is just to do it straight with a brush. So, go back to our colors. This is the white color we just used. This is the darker one. We're going to use that one for the mountain that's closer to us. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead up here and just start laying in this color. And this is where the detail brush can be really, really helpful if I don't have a palette knife. So you see it's got this nice point. So I'm going to go ahead and take that point. Hold on. I'm going to take that point right here at the top. Okay. I'm going to lay this as flat as I can so you can see it. And then that allows me to get a really, really nice point at the peak. And then I just start pulling. one. It's a little too squatty for me, sorry. I just went ahead and made the peak taller. And I want this one to be a little bit more jagged than it was. So I'm just bringing it out further than what our burnt umber outline was. And I can do that because there's no real blueprint for this. I mean, we have our outline, but it's just a guide. It's not written in stone. And I'm gonna actually turn this into another peak right here, just like that. We can do that. The same rules apply. Brush it into nothing. And you'll notice that right here, I don't let those meet. Oh wait, actually I should, so sorry. 
right here at the bottom. I'm going to stop because, as you now know, we're going to miss this right here. Okay. Let's go back up here. Darken this up a little bit. Nice and dark. some mist in here, so that's why I'm not bringing the paint down any further. So I can either use my larger brush or I can use my fan brush, doesn't matter which, personal preference. I'm a big fan of the fan brush, so I'm going to use that to go ahead and pull this out into the void, just like we did with the first one. sitting there wondering why did we paint all those clouds if we're just going to cover them up it's because I didn't know exactly how these mountains were going to look hopefully freedom and fun and oil painting can happen it's not all mapped out to the letter just seeing what happens as you start working with the paint seeing what you like and what you don't like just going into this nearer peak, so this one's going to be really, really close to us, or it's going to be the closest to us of the three. So I want this to be the darkest of the three, the most intense in its value. So just bring it down, and then as I get to the bottom, lift. Stroke down, and then lift. Pull it down, and lift. I can do that this way too. Pull down and lift. And that's what it looks like, okay? So that I get this nice feathery edge at the bottom, which is what we want. So I can get a brush, pop it on the side of the trash can, brush it on the towel, and let's start working with our mist. Go straight into the white, just like that. And let's go ahead and start right here. Let's go ahead and get it on first, and then we'll start misting it like that. Pull and lift. Pull and lift. Pull and lift. And just keep bringing it up into the mountain color. Really tell where one starts and the other stops. Clean the brush. Lock it on the side of the trash can. Brush on the towel. Now watch how I take this edge right here of my fan brush and just kind of bunch it up along the outline here and then sort of just bring it up to the top of our peak and then start blending this out again. I want it whitest down here and the slate color up here. And then there should be a gradual shifting of the colors as we move up from light to dark or moving down from dark to light. And that's where the mist collects. Now, if you look closely, there's this one area right here where the mist isn't quite reaching, and I don't want to do that with my fan brush because, of course, fan brush tends to be messy. So I'm going to take my nice detail brush with a sharp edge and just very, very carefully bring the paint right up to the edge. And as soon as I start bringing it into that dark, it gets polluted. So I need to do one or two things. I either need to clean that detail brush and reapply, or if I'm satisfied with that very, very left edge, just keep, keep working with a clean fan brush, which is what, what I'm going to do. So very, very lightly, I get that bristles on there and pull. 
Presses on, pull. Presses on, pull. And pull. They're starting to get polluted, so I need to finish. That, I think, is good enough. So we'll go ahead and clean the uh, brush. I'm not going to go inside the trash can. Wipe it on the towel. Back into the raw white. And go ahead and bring the white down to this valley, to this trough. in just like so and start brushing it out just like that and you see how my brush has gotten polluted and it's okay I'm just gonna make sure that this color is nice and lightened didn't plan that but it looks really good doesn't it like it's covered in mist so it's a lot lighter than this peak up here and then just keep brushing it out like we've been doing. Now I've got the bristles, wipe them on the towel, do one more application of the straight white, see how that looks and see if we need any more. Got the paint right on there, lay it on real heavy, put it in the trough, work our way up like so. And I want to go ahead and bring this darker edge down just a little bit. Clean this up. There we go. That looks nice. And again, we don't want to be able to tell where the line stops and the new line starts. That looks good. And now we have to figure out some important decisions. Where is our light coming from? So on these mountains, the light's coming from a particular direction. It's very, very difficult for a beginner or even for experienced painters to do the light coming head on. And it's not as interesting or dramatic. It's much, much more interesting and much more dramatic to have the light coming from one side or another. On this particular painting, if we look at the clouds, it could be coming from either direction. It could be coming from this way, it could be coming from that way. It's really whatever we want. Okay. So it's just uh, it's arbitrary, and I just need to pick a color. Now, you'll notice I've got this little blob of white right here. Let me go ahead and brush that out. Again, no big deal. See that? It's gone. I think. Cleaning my brush. I think, I think. I think we're going to have the sun go this way, coming from this way, coming from the right. So we're going to have our lighter sides of the mountain on the right, and our shadowy sides are going to be on the left. Okay. So let's go ahead and get our knife again. And what I want to do is I want to get one nice clean plate. We're going to go ahead and put on a nice dollop of white, titanium white. That should be enough. And the reason I'm not using the white that I have on the other plate is because because if I did, I risk it getting diluted. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to flatten this out like so. Okay. And so that takes up a large portion, and I want to be able to drag the knife blade flat like that. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take a nice little ridge. See that? 
and because I'm left-handed, I'm going to start over on this side. 